Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! <laughs> Alex, you're scaring the listeners. <laughs> oh, sorry. My bad. Episode 25. We can rent a car without paying a fee and a uh, hotel for being room. Underage. Or is that 21? And a hotel. Okay. Uh, I don't know about the hotel room thing, but I know that car rental places do charge you extra if you're under 25, so you don't have to pay that cost anymore. Well, there you go. Thank you for that invaluable information, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alex Krogh, resident dad on the podcast. Oh, my God. What's next? Yeah, Are, you gonna kick me off? Are you going to kick me off your insurance? <laughs> Oh the, my God. the the fact the fact that our social media coordinator today posted on Twitter that I referenced three is a magic number from like 1975 and posted the clip. Three is a magic like, number. Oh. The video is from 1973. Of course, I didn't understand the reference. You know who else didn't understand the reference? Anybody watching the show? <laughs> Hold on, though. I bet you that more people got the three is a magic number reference than anything we talk related to the Bachelor. I sat and I watched like half of that music video, if you whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Three, the six, fo- nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, yeah. 24, 27. 30 just is 30. like the Kool Aid man. He just keeps walking through walls and crap. I had no idea what oh, was going on. Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. Um, so today we had uh, an episode of uh, Sleeper Stud Sacco lined up. Um, Boom. And we are going to do that. We are going to get to it. However, this has been a crazy news day in in the NFL and uh, really all sports for that matter. Um, So newsy stuff is normally at the end. We're going to chop it off and get it done in the front. We got some breaking news and things to cover. Newsy stuff. Let's uh, start at the top here. Debo Samuel was on the sidelines sprinting. And changing directions today. Love it. Are we uh, are we thinking the pup might uh, might just be a rumor? Do you think he, he can get out of it in, what, 16 days and get ready for week one? Or do you think that he'll still start on the pup? Wait, football starts in 16 days? I feel like we're burying the lead a little bit. Um, holy it's two cow. Weeks and, it's two weeks and a day. <sighs> Man, I can't wait. 15 um, days. So, like, initially when he, you know, got injured, there was hope that he would be back for the regular season. And the fact that, you know, what Kendrick Bourne or Kendrick Bourne is now like the 49ers guy, but like Brandon Ayuk and everybody else there has gotten hurt where it's basically like Travis Kelsey is the only wide receiver and he's playing tight end. And they need somebody to at least go stand out at wide receiver at this point. And I feel like they're going to rush Debo back, which might not be a good thing considering the type of injury that he has. Um, But yeah, if there's any hope that like he's back for week one and not going to sit out the first six weeks. I mean, currently I have him ranked at 32. You have him at 42. If he's literally healthy and he's going to start the season, He's like a top 15 wide receiver, probably. Yeah, he would skyrocket. Skyrocket so, in uh, in our ranks and ADPs. I don't think he comes back and is ready for week one. They shouldn't. This they, point, they should. Like the 49ers should be taking a long term approach with all their players because yeah. their defense is good enough. They're primarily a running team anyway. Even if so. they go 500 in the first six weeks, like they're still going to win a majority of their last 10. So I wouldn't be super right. worried about it. However, yep. what I, I guess what I think that this might open the door up to is skipping the pup, but not coming back in time for week one and being mm-hmm. sort of that like in between, maybe missing yeah, a week like, or two. Yep. Yeah. Like a week three return. And even still, you get him for three more weeks than you were planning on. Like if you've already had a draft and you have him on your team, you're ecstatic. First of yeah. all, don't draft. Don't draft earlier than Labor Day weekend is, is right. a general rule. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got to be pretty excited if you have him already. The yeah, fact that he can come back. But yeah, I mean, until he's 
like officially like participating in practice. I mean, he was just off on the sidelines and the reports where he was going full speed off to the side. But until he actually joins practice, I think you have to continue to discount his value. Yeah, he's uh, he's currently going as wide receiver 35 and the 97th overall player drafted in drafts. Uh, We have him as wide receiver 38, actually. So we have him ranked lower at the position. However, because we have a lot less quarterbacks ranked in those mid rounds, we he we actually have him ranked significantly higher overall Mm -hmm. and and tight ends as well. Uh, We have him ranked as the 79th overall player. So even though we have him ranked lower at the position, we actually have him ranked higher overall. And so if you get rid of that injury designation... Keep on moving up, Debo, and I would love to get you. So, yep, yeah, um, it's a, it's it's an interesting development because all of a sudden it came out today that he's like going full speed on the sideline. It's like, what does that mean? And nobody he knows. said he would be back. We'll see. He did. He did. Um, other little bit of injury news today. As uh, Bears fans, we had quite the scare. Uh, David Rough. Montgomery went down with a non-contact leg injury that is evidently a groin injury. Um, He's currently being drafted as the 27th running back, 79th overall, which I thought was extreme value. Uh, We have him ranked all the way up as running back 19 and 35th overall. Um, Obviously we would move him down in our rankings if he's supposed to miss time. I've, I've literally like, It's amazing. I love Twitter because as soon as this injury happened, there were like four doctors talking through all the possibilities and the range of outcomes stems anywhere from four to eight week injury to like, maybe he comes back in two or three, but realistically it's looking like four to eight weeks for David Montgomery. So like the trade talk was swirling at first. It was like the guy blew out a knee, but you got to think that Monty's going to fall some more. I, it's going to be interesting to see what the bears do, right? Like, do they sign Devonta Freeman? Do they make a trade? Do they just say Cordero Patterson? What's up? Running back one. Like that's not going to be Tariq Cohen. No, right. They're, they're not going to be running Tariq Cohen up the middle. I mean, he might get a couple more toss plays or whatever to figure out whatever they're doing with him. I mean, the Devonta Freeman thing is is interesting. You floated on Twitter earlier about uh, trading for Kareem Hunt, which I actually thought was really interesting, especially with with uh, Matt, Nagy, Matt Nagy being a right being a, f- a former Chiefs offensive coordinator where where Kareem Hunt was previously for being the Browns. Um, I mean, as a Bears fan, I'm initially devastated. I'm sure you are too, as an Iowa guy or Iowa State guy or whoever Both. you're for. Like the entire you're for the entire state of Iowa. Um I O W A. I don't know what that means, and neither does anybody else. Um <laughs> I, I just I just uh it it sucks because that's where the Bears are actually the the least depth prepared on their entire offense. Um I feel like they were really banking on building around him. This year, especially if the quarterbacks suck, you have to have a running back. And if you don't have a running back and you don't have a quarterback, you don't really have an offense. So maybe you even discount Allen Robinson because you can just put like three guys on him and stop their offense. Like at this point, stop a Like at this point, like put put two cornerbacks on Allen Robinson inside, outside, throw the safety over the top and let him throw to Jimmy Graham, who's apparently the best offensive player on on their team. Lighting up Bears camp. The only, I mean, he was carrying Alshon Jeffries piano in Green Bay last year. Oh so my God. Uh, there's enough pianos to go around. I mean, we can a, do it's this. A tra- yeah, it's the it's the story of the traveling piano. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the sisterhood of the traveling pianos. <laughs> yeah, br- brotherhood actually. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it like you never want to see a con a non contact injury and his foot slipped, and so I'm hoping it's not that severe but at the same time if anything it's going to continue to drop his value where maybe you can get him around later or two than you were planning on and if that's the case if he comes back again it's about when, when he comes back he's gonna be the guy and so i've said it before take take people who have injuries i said about debo I'm gonna say it about montgomery here 
if he's going to be there a round or two later and you have a you have an IR slot or you can just stash him for a couple weeks, especially when you're not planning on playing him immediately, you're going to be golden at the end of the season. So just wait, be patient and take him when you think you need to where he's finally not going to stop dropping. So just just take advantage of it. And uh, our last person dealing with pup related issues, Sony Michelle. Off the pup oh. today. See you later, Lamar Miller. Right? What is that? What is he's that? He's the mean? starter. He's the, he's he's got to be the starter, right? Lamar Miller. No, Sony Michelle. I think he's got to be the starter. I think it means that see you later, Damian Harris. Maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe Lamar's just an insurance policy. One. I mean, they got to cut. They got to just cut somebody then. Yeah, I was going to say, it's almost similar to the Washington backfield, at least a little bit, where you hope that they're just like, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to sign Lamar Miller, and you just cut him. Um, because if they do cut Lamar Miller, I feel like that would give considerable more clarity to the backfield, where it would be similar to last year, where every time they're going to throw the ball, James White's going to be on the field. Every time and they're going to run the Damian ball. And you Harris, and you have Burkhead, and now Michelle's back. It's just... Yeah, but it's it would just be more predictable. But with Lamar Miller there, who can play all three downs when he's healthy and can catch similar to James White and can run similar to Sonny Michelle or maybe even better. Oh my God. Like if it was like I was staying away from that backfield as soon as they signed Lamar Miller. Now that Sonny Michelle's back, like if I touch a Patriot running back, hopefully you don't touch any running backs. Yeah, I mean legally that's probably correct, but I like I don't want anything to do with their backfield. Yeah, completely understand and agreed. It's just it's so unpredictable how that backfield is going to perform. And you have Cam there potentially stealing some of that short yardage appeal and, and uh, goal all line. of it. Yeah, not, so not even just, some of it, but historically all of it. When he's the <laughs> he's the best running back at a goal line situation that they have. Yeah, so it's just I don't know anybody that I really want that appeals to me unless Lamar Miller somehow evolves into a three down back, which I don't think will happen. James White is too good at being in the pass catching back. So, yeah, and and you're not going to know that when you're drafting. So it's just a guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Let's see. Chris Carson is back at Seattle practice after missing several days with a personal matter, Chris, hopefully everything is resolved and uh, good to go here on out. Hopefully it wasn't Get in anything. the car, son. Ride oh. it as long as you can. All right. And um, what else do we got here? Bruce Arians. Uh, when asked about why Godwin has missed three practices in the last six days. Said strange. That's for me to know and nobody else to find out. Oh, no. Oh, no. So we got that going for us on Godwin. I will say he's a free agent after this season and he's only 24 mm. years old, making 2.1 mm. million. Mm. So maybe just maybe it's contract talks. Uh, Yeah, I was going to say maybe contract talks or he might uh fake an injury or two throughout the season just to try to get through the season healthy which we've seen players do especially like i mean again he was wide receiver two last year from a fantasy perspective i'm very confident that owners understand fantasy value um and i do actually think that it plays into uh offensive players contract negotiations i think it'd be silly if it didn't um you got to be think he doesn't want to get injured right now yeah like get paid like so, he, he's essentially like i mean how many running backs have have sat out on their rookie deals like we, yeah. i don't know if we've really seen a wide receiver sit down on the rookie deal but i guess it's possible so maybe it, it bumps mike evans gronk and even oj howard up a smidge if he's contemplating even sitting out we'll see well, that offense that, that's is interesting a, that offense is a lot different without him in it because he's that for sure slot middle of the field guy and runs the routes that Brady loves to throw. And so if you lose that, then he's chucking to tight ends over and stuff over the middle and stuff instead and making chunk plays to Mike Evans. Mm -hmm. I, uh, (laughs) I am just real curious to see what, uh, what's for Bruce Arians to know and nobody else to find out. 
Yeah, that's not exciting. Um, I I actually do think that that might bump. Uh, I mean, if if you did not already have Mike Evans ahead of Godwin, I feel like that's more of a solidifier than anything. And then it's uh, crazy. It's crazy how things how much things change based on how coaches word things or say things, especially this time of year. And there's no preseason to really judge anything off of this year. Um, so yeah. like it's a crazy I mean, we, sports we, world, man. We we updated our rankings this week. Um, and I'm, I'm hopefully not planning on doing it again because it's just so much work. I mean, oh. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. It's uh, that's a lot of work. You to only update have so everything. much time you can dedicate to updating our ranks. Yeah, I do. Um, and and so should the people listening. Like, take care of your family, see your girlfriend, see your boyfriend. Like, rely on us a little bit and be like, oh, somebody got hurt. Oh, they haven't discounted them yet. By the way, still had Sony Michelle in the thirties, so I was planning ahead on that one. Um, so I, I'm just. Like we just put so much stock into coach speak this time of year because we have nothing else to do. So I, I do think that you just still ride with your rankings as as they were beforehand. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mike Evans over Godwin at this point almost seems like common sense, especially if Godwin is questionable. For I any would say reason. yes and no to that. Like if if it's just coach speak and the guy's practicing and he's getting his reps with the first team, then that's one thing. But like if the guy's actively missing time away from the team, then maybe I'm a little bit more concerned. Not that I'm changing my rankings, but like maybe I would potentially, if I'm picking right between two people and I have to pick, I don't know, this weekend, I still know what's going on. Then maybe I pick somebody else, but I don't know. Lord knows now that it's been addressed, there's going to be nothing but follow up after follow up question for Bruce Arians to try and see what the heck's going on. So that's just the world we live in. Interesting. Um, Speaking of crazy sports stuff, it's been uh, it's been quite quite the crazy sports day. Um, we have uh, teams sitting out games. We have protesting things going on. We have all sorts of madness going on. Um, I mean, even in the league this week, there were. 77 false positive COVID tests spread around mm-hmm. 11 different football teams. Like this season, I think more than any other season of any sport, really not just football is probably like the craziest thing to try and prepare for, especially from a fantasy perspective. There's just so many unforeseen things from false positive COVID tests to the vast array of soft tissue injuries we've already seen and will continue to see because of it to not knowing depth charts because there's no preseason games to players potentially boycotting, protesting, sitting out games, games being postponed because of COVID or what? Like, I mean, you had playoff basketball games get canceled tonight because the players refuse to play because they're protesting Black Lives Matter. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, like, this is a crazy, crazy year. Um, and 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 some MLB players, you know, took the night off and yeah, from like a teams. piece from like a piece for protest. No, I'm, I'm well, yeah, MLB teams did, but individual players did as well, right? Um, and so to think that. It's not going to impact the NFL season. Like the the funny thing, and I we haven't talked about this beforehand, but like Colin Kaepernick first kneeled during a game four years ago today. And so wow. it just it just so happened that, you know, an uh, NBA team did not show up to play in, in protest. Um and it's one of those things where you just have to be preparing for this from a, like, I, I don't want to discount any of the movements that are going on or the protesting or what people are standing for or, or, or any of that. So please do not get that construed. But I, I really do think that, you know, just to plug our, a previous podcast of, of what we did around COVID-19 and how it should impact your, your drafting this year or, or how to even set up your leagues. I really do think it's important to understand that like for lack of a better way to put it, weird shit's going to happen this year. And 
if you're not prepared for it, then you're just being ignorant. So yeah, like just like I more than anything, and I feel like we like I am most proud of anything that we've put out of that podcast so far because I mean you basically ran down every single possible scenario that you could run into, and most of them I actually fallen in love with. Um, because we don't know what's going to happen. So you might as well just prepare for the worst and figure out how to handle it both individually and as a league and just get on the same page and be like, this is what we're going to do. And this is why we're doing it. It's a one year thing and fix it. Um, but yeah, I mean, today was a crazy sports day and like, I mean, what they're protesting happened an hour and 25 minutes from, from where we live up in Kenosha. It's a little closer for you than it is for me. Um, and like for work, I have a client in Kenosha and it's just, it's crazy what's going on right now. And I would just encourage everybody to just under like, so, uh, PFT commentator, uh, from, from part of my take really had a, you know, he summarized it really well where he was just like, Hey, I don't know what the repercussions are for the NBA. Like, I'm too dumb to understand what's really going on. There's so much money involved. I don't get any of it. But to just discount that entire teams are sitting out during the playoffs or boycotting playing, like, we're not going back to whatever was going on beforehand. Like, we have to understand that they're going to take their civil rights or whatever to their... Um, whatever they're feeling and just say, Hey, this is what we stand for. And we're not going back to the old way. Like it's going to be what it is going forward. And so I, I just think that you have to prepare for it. I, I thought it was good from a, I mean, PMT commentator is a, our PFT commentator is like a jokester inherently. He's not even who he is, but it was just like an interesting take where I was just like, Oh, okay. Like, yeah, we're probably not going back to where we are. So we need to plan for what's going to be in the future, especially around fantasy football. Yeah, and that's why kind of the overarching motto of that COVID podcast was basically yeah. prepare for the worst, hope for the best, make it yeah. as easy for everybody to enjoy something as, I mean, I would say simple as something as fun, uh, yeah. you know, as fantasy football can be. And put all of the mechanisms in place for people to succeed without having to stress about things that you wouldn't have to in a normal season and uh, and make it make people as competitive as possible, given whatever may occur to their teams this year. Um, COVID, you know, evidently or otherwise, like we were talking about postponed games because of COVID, but we're seeing postponed, you know, regular season games for very different reasons right now um, in, in sports. And so, yeah, I mean, if you can do whatever you can to just prepare your leagues and, and, and you know, you hope for the best, prepare for the worst and everybody have fun as much as we can. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not taking away from any of the movements going on right now. We've, talked ad nauseum about how much, you know, we support the black lives matter movement. Um, I don't think that that's really a question. Uh, I'm not exactly which sure, sure which podcast it was. I believe it was the second uh, quarterback rankings podcast. I believe it was like the first half of it. Yeah. We spent talk about talking about that topic itself. Um, Yeah. I just, just, I mean, the, the biggest thing for me as, as people, you know, we, what do you say? We're uh, fifteen days away from f- from football or whatever we are, but it's just like, like just plan for it, prepare for it, because fantasy football needs to be fun. If it's not fun, if you're taking everything too seriously, if you're overreacting about every little thing, like then it's just not going to be fun. Like just loosen up, have fun. You're playing with people you know, they're friends, like, or if they're not friends, make them friends. Like we, we need to really start getting back to, you know, what the essence of fantasy football is. And it's just like, have fun, beat somebody, talk a little shit to them and uh, tell them that you're better than them. There you go. And, and that's why you're listening to us. So you can do that. Yep. And uh, now that it's almost been a half hour, let's jump into the topic of the day which is sleepers, studs, and sackos, or studs, sackos, and sleepers, however we want to tackle this. Um, juggle. Juggle? All right. I like juggling. 
Can you juggle? Uh, uh, no, not at all. I'm not coordinated enough to do that. No, but yeah. It, have it, you ever I would done like, like to. The, like the with the like three scarves where you're trying to like catch them and throw them in the air. Yes. Yeah. No, I use bowling pins, but yes. So you could do it with bowling pins? <laughs> no, I can't do it at all. <laughs> Um, so we're doing stud sacro sleepers. So we're talking about players that we think, you know, studs are players that are already ranked high that we think are going to perform at their ADPs or maybe even exceed them. Sackos, I think, uh, or we believe are players who will not live up to their ADP expectations, or we think players are not, um, shouldn't be drafted where they're currently, where they're currently being drafted. And then sleepers, I mean, sleepers really vary by position. And honestly, there's not really a great, any one clear definition of what a sleeper is, which is kind of a good thing, kind of a bad thing, you know, across the industry. But uh, uh, for our positions, we're talking like, uh, I guess I'll spoil mine. I'm talking about quarterbacks today. All of my stud Sacco sleepers are QBs. And so I'm not going to be talking about, you know, the the, the 30th ranked quarterback as a sleeper, like, not a huge thing. I'm going to be talking about most, t- most Nick leagues. Foles, Trubisky. There you go. Sleepers. Yeah, Mr. Biscuit. But uh, yeah, I mean, most quarterbacks, there's usually 12 to maybe 14, 15 guys that are drafted in a league, if at all. So I'm going to be talking about some of those lower ranked guys for, uh, for my sleepers. But I want to get started with studs. Everybody knows who they are. Um, Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, and arguably Dak Prescott. Um, it's going to lead me into my, it's going to lead me into my sackos, but, uh, we'll let you go in between. It's fine. I like having you in the middle. No, um, I, f- I feel, I feel like we're talking about the same thing with just two different positions because essentially, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going tight end heavy on this and really tight ends and quarterbacks are basically the same position from a value standpoint. Yeah. And well, let's say that I think to the end, as far as what our motto is for these two, because I think it's going to present yeah. itself. Okay. All so, right. so for, uh, for quarterbacks, for the studs, you either get one of these three guys, which I think are Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes or Dak Prescott. Or if you don't, I think you wait. Um, and I lump Dak Prescott in there. I think he's sort of in a third tier all by himself with everybody else kind of below him after Mahomes and Lamar. Um, but, I mean, we can get into, into some statty stuff. I'll drop some stuff. But uh, just to try and quantify just how amazing these guys are, Lamar Jackson would have been the 15th overall running back last season. Only Hmm. five running backs had more rushing yards than he did. He averaged almost 28 points a week. Um, And his his, his team had the lowest pass percentage in the league at only 46%. I mean, they just ran the ball down everybody's throat. Uh, This season, they have the easiest strength of schedule. Uh, by using uh, last year's win-loss percentage for each opponent. Their playoff schedule is at Cleveland, who gave up the 11th most points to QBs last season. At home against Jacksonville, gave up the 13th most, point, 13th most points to QBs. And Easy then, for you to say. Yeah, and then finally, at home against the Giants, gave up the third most points to QBs. They have the second-ranked offensive line with the ninth lowest pressure rate last year. They have the third ranked defense per fantasy pros. Uh, He only scored less than 20 points in two games. (laughs) He scored less than 20 points in only two games. Oh my God. (laughs) That's really disgusting. He scored more than 30 in seven. Oh, (laughs) like the guys, the guy was a machine. He was, he was insane. So, and people got him in the double digit rounds last season. I'm sad. I didn't. yeah, you, you kind of forget about that stuff every once in a while. So yeah. it's 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 nice to reiterate it. Yeah. Um, God, is he good. Mahomes, Mahomes was good uh, last season, but he also dealt with an injury. However, he was exceptional the year before, throwing for more than 50 touchdowns. Um, he was... Uh, their team was rather was 10th in pass percentage at more just over 61%. They have the 14th easiest schedule. Uh, their playoffs are at Miami gave up the second most points to QBs. Uh, so warm weather in the playoffs like that at new Orleans in a dome like that at home against Atlanta. Love that. Um, 
you know, that's some high flying offenses right there. Um, I just, I think he's going to have a bounce back year in a lot of ways. He threw for 5,100 yards, 50 touchdowns, ran for almost 300 yards and another two scores in, in 2018, where he also averaged almost 28 points a week. Like Mm. these two are the elite of the elite of the elite is as far as quarterbacks go. So, yep. I think they have a chance. Both of them have a chance to compete there. We've talked about it numerous times. If your team or if your league only gives out four points for a passing touchdown, snag Lamar. If they give out six points for a passing touchdown, go Mahomes um, just for the value. And then yep. lastly, guy I want to touch on is Dak. Uh, quarterback three. Um have a easy division, Washington, Philadelphia, and the Giants. So six games against what I would say are bottom feeder teams or bottom defenses anyway. Um, he averaged 24 points per game against them last year. And then you add Mike McCarthy's pass offense to that. They have the third easiest strength of schedule. Playoff schedule is at Cincy, at home against San Fran, at home against Philly. Um, everybody knows about the Dallas offensive line. I just, he's, they were already really good. And I think that they have a chance to be better. Um, It's really hard to figure out where to take him. It is. uh, I have the ADPs for all these guys. Lamar, uh, we have ranked uh, 14th overall, currently being drafted in ESPN leagues at 13th. Um, Behind Pat Mahomes, who we have ranked 30th overall, currently being drafted 12th in ESPN leagues as the first quarterback off the board. And then good old Dak Prescott, we have ranked um, 55th overall, so not as much respect for Dak even amongst ourselves. Uh, But we do, I believe, have him ranked as QB3, however, even though it's that much lower. ESPN, he's currently being drafted 50th overall. However, he's going as the sixth QB off the board. And so so that's the value. That's the value is you can get Dak as the sixth QB off the board, which is just insane value. And when I say I'm going to talk about who my Sackos are. Keep that in mind that uh, there's three guys between Lamar, Mahomes, and Dak right now. But those are my those are my studs, the guys that I think I'm looking for. If if I'm taking a quarterback early, to me, it's probably one of these one of these three fine gentlemen. What about you? Tell me about your stud tight ends. Yeah, I mean you're you're going you're going quarterbacks. I'm going tight ends, and um, you know again we've talked about it. You're Jackson and Mahomes, and I'm talking about Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. Uh, currently, Travis Kelsey is going 20th on ESPN. George Kittle is going 23rd. Um, we, after our tight end podcast, which you can catch out in our archives, um, we both talked about it. And we're like, why is Kittle not ranked higher, especially if Debo is not going to start the year? And I mean, as we've already talked about, yeah, Debo might be starting the year active, but we don't know how effective he's going to be. And they literally don't have any other wide receivers. Um, that makes that me have... worry now. Because so? because they've lost so many now that I am worried that the defense will not have a reason to really f- focus on anyone else. And that they might just double Kittle every single play. And that's fine, but if if you're if you're that offense, and you're gonna put a linebacker and a cornerback on on Kittle, and you're still gonna run the ball sixty percent of the time, like I th- I think you're just happy run with weak that. side. Yeah, just run weak yeah. side. Like right, exactly. You're gonna focus over here. Okay, well I'm gonna run over to the other side and screw you anyway. Like he's that good of an offensive coach where where he's going to scheme for that. And so you just can't do it. And so do you put a cornerback on Kittle where he's blocking a tight end? You're going to run to the strong side. And they're going to run enough motions and things to get Kittle and an opportunity to get open. So that's that's true. Even a couple years ago when he had his first breakout season, he was really the only offensive weapon. It was him and Dante Pettis. Like, who? Yeah, who has done 
yeah, he didn't even exist last year, right? And, and people were trying to figure out, <laughs> hey, there needs to be a 49ers wide receiver in the top 24. And it was Dante Pettis and he wasn't going to like the 30s and, and nobody wanted to take him. Then he was dropped like two or three weeks into the season anyway. So like, again, Kelsey Kittle, they're the they're the two studs. That's it. And and Zach Ertz, similar to Dak Prescott, just kind of hanging out. He's the value. So, right. So Zach Ertz is going 37th on ESPN. Um, so beginning around four, end of round three. And I mean, he's been Mr. Consistency the last three years and is the number one target in the Eagles offense. And I know Rager's there and Deshaun like Deshaun's there. Alshon's there when he's healthy. Yeah. So not the first half of the season this year. Um, Right. But, but that's Ertz. Ertz is the number one guy in that entire, in that entire offense. I was going to say, I mean, you already have Alshon out the way. Like the big reason last year, a lot of people were saying that, Ertz might take a step back was because they finally had enough offensive weapons to where Ertz might not have to be the focus anymore. But then yeah. you saw Deshaun Jackson and Alshon both go down with injuries that plagued them both for the entire season. And it was the Ertz Goddard show. Um, right. Th- that was all they had. Yeah. I mean, there was, literally there was, all was all they had. They had. Uh, uh, Greg Ward, baby. Um, Yuck. But people were starting them in, in championship games because they didn't right. have anybody else to throw to. Right. So, yeah, he's absolutely could be the guy. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was the number one tight end. We've said it all off season. No. And I mean, I always go with people that I've had on my team previously. Zach Ertz was on my team a couple of years ago, along with DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, and the three of them carried me to a title. And so I'm always partial to those people that have already performed in the past and Zach Ertz going around in, in round four, end of round three, early round four is, is fantastic value. If you can get him, he's very similar to Dak Prescott where he's a distant third, but he's still a really good third, at least in our opinion. Um, And so like the fact that Mark Andrews is going a pick before Zach Ertz, where I mean, yeah, Mark Andrews finished ahead of Zach Ertz last year as the number four tight end. Zach Ertz was five. But, I mean, Zach Ertz had the second most targets from a tight end perspective. Mark Andrews had the the fifth most targets. But he had ten touchdowns. And Zach Ertz only had six. Like, Mark Andrews is a prime candidate for a touchdown regression candidate. Zach Ertz is going to have six probably again, or if not more, depending on what that offense looks like. So like, is, uh, would you say that uh, Andrews is your Sacco then? Because, well, yeah, you just so, don't think he's going to live up to the ADP, but not even that you would just prefer Ertz at the same ADP. Right. I just prefer Ertz at at the similar ADP. I'm pretty confident that you do. And I feel like most people actually do because Baltimore doesn't throw the ball enough. We like the fact that Lamar had led the league in touchdowns last year. That's not going to happen again. It's just not. They're going to run the ball too much, especially with the addition of J.K. Dobbins. They've not improved any other substantial skill position on that team. So it's going to look similar at at the height of it. And the other teams in that division have improved, um, especially from a defensive standpoint. So yeah, I mean, we like. Well, I say we. I don't want to. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But the fact that Mark Andrews is going third, Darren Waller is the fifth ranked tight end going fifty first overall ADP. That doesn't impress me. Evan Ingram sixty first. So that's just after round five, right? That's the beginning of round six. Um, Gronk is going 63rd. Really, he's probably going 69th, but we'll leave that out. Uh, Tyler Higby, 76th from a tight end perspective, ADP. Jared Cook, 89th. Hunter Henry, 92nd. There are question marks about all those guys. And I know I alluded to Tyler Higby uh, last episode saying he's the ultimate boomer bus player. But going through everything that we've gone through and where the ADPs are the last couple of episodes, both on Yahoo and ESPN, by the way, check them out. It's good stuff. There are so many other people that are available 
that why even waste a spot on a tight end when you can be locking in incredible value at a running back or wide receiver value because you can play multiple of a wide receiver or tight end. It can help you out in a fuck spot. And like there are just there's question marks like Mark Andrews again, 10 touchdowns last year. Are you really going to trust him to repeat that? Darren Waller, Jason Witten's there. Do you really think they're not going to use Jason Witten? And they have Henry Ruggs and a healthy uh, Renfro. Like that's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, Evan Ingram. He's never stayed healthy, and he's going as the sixth tight end. Gronk, I love, I love the guy, but he hasn't played football in two years. Like, can you really trust him to deliver a fifth round, sixth round value? No, you can't. You can't do that. Tyler Higby, yeah, he was one of the best guys the last six weeks of the season last year. He like the last eight weeks of the year last year, he was wide receiver two. Like he was unbelievable. But we don't know what's gonna happen. Cooper Cup's gonna be there. Like by well, the way, he did it when Gerald Everett was hurt. Was out and now he's back. But Jared Goff, by the way, Locke came in as a as an a QB one this year, even though he's not being drafted like it. Between Higby, Bobby Trees, and and my little Cooper Cup, like I love his weapons but like can you trust tyler higby to be that tight end one i don't know jared cook he had nine touchdowns last year but he was 16th in targets do you really want to take him at 89th overall like no you don't hunter henry we've talked about the fact that tyrod taylor is not going to support Whatever's going on in that offense, we have no idea what that offense looks like. He's going to throw for so, 3,000 yards and he's not going to support a tight end one. Like that person's going to be drafting or looking elsewhere. Especially if you, smartly like me, value your tight end ones as being a top six tight end. Like there's no reason why you should be taking him at, at 92nd overall, which is, which is tight end 10. Just like at that point, just wait. Like, and, and we'll get into this in the sleepers a little bit, but like, just wait. There's no reason to be like, oh, tight ends are going, push the panic button. If you missed out on Kelsey, Kittle, or Ertz, just like hang out and take the best player available because you're going to get more value. Yeah. Um, and, and that goes back to my quarterback uh, Sackos, which fits in nicely here. If you miss out on Lamar Mahomes, and if you miss out again on Dak, uh, currently going 50th overall. So what is that? The beginning of the fifth round. Um, I mean, then I think that you're fine to wait. I guess what I would say is I wouldn't want to miss on both tight end and quarterback. Cause then I feel yep. like you're kind of making up, you're making up some ground at both positions when I'd really only like to make up ground at one. And we keep talking about and keep hammering how much uh, wide receiver depth there is. So I'd rather reach for either one of those two positions, get one locked down and then get yep. some of that wide receiver depth that we currently see going in the mid rounds. Um, right. But, but if we, we go, we go back to the mock, mock, mock draft episode. We had a couple uh, episodes ago where you were able to lock down Lamar and you were able to get Ertz in the fifth. Yeah, it was and crazy. You, like you weren't chasing either. And you had the wide receiver depth and you were able to to take your running back in the first round. Why, so it was just like it was, it was unbelievable. It was like ridiculous. If, if it was one of the lock, best mock drafts there will ever be. But uh Okay, pat yourself on the back. Well, I just mean I don't think it's realistic to actually get that team in drafts, is what I meant to no. say. No, I agree. Because um, I don't think that they'll actually be there come actual draft time. But yeah, for right, mock sakes. And and to to your, and I guess to a certain extent, my point, if you can get Dak and Ertz as a, a fifth and sixth round pick or for you know, fifth, vice even. versa, like you're still doing really good because if, if you go on running back, running back, wide receiver in the third, take Ertz in the fourth and Dak in the fifth. Like you are just, you were just skating. That's, I would salivate well, over that team. Yeah. You're, you're just flying because you can fill out that wide receiver. Um, as we've previously talked about very easily in the sixth through 10th round. 
Yep. So my Sackos are guys being drafted between Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, and Dak Prescott, namely Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, and Deshaun Watson are all going between Mahomes and Dak. Dak. I do like Kyler Murray, though. Just just for the record, I, I, I do like Kyler Murray. I would not take him in front of Dak, but that upside is there. Um, the upside but, is absolutely there, but like... Yeah. Dak Until was quarterback. It. Dak was quarterback two last year. Like, right? I don't. I'm not trying to draft Kyler Murray, who uh, was charged for more sacks as being his fault than any other per- quarterback in the league, with 23 of f- of 48 sacks being Kyler Murray's fault last season. That doesn't impact his statistics, though, from a fantasy standpoint. And you don't think that that'll get better with the addition of DeAndre no, Hopkins? No, it affects the offense. Crazy. No, I think it does get better, which I I agree with you. Like, I have Kyler Murray ranked substantially high. I'm not down on him. I just like Dak more. I'm confused why somebody would take Kyler, Russ, and Deshaun over him. I mean, really, sure. the, the Deshaun Watson pick is really the baffling one. I mean... That yep. coach hasn't done very much of anything to help Deshaun Watson put up better fantasy points. Um, yes, he does get points, you know, consistently running the ball. Um, however, I you lost DeAndre Hopkins. You have the ninth hardest schedule in the league. Uh, you have a 20th ranked offensive line that was ranked 31st before they added Tunsil last year. You have the 22nd ranked defense. I mean, the only thing he has going for him is how well he did last season, but he also had DeAndre Hopkins then. Like, pretty sure mostly everybody could do okay if they have DeAndre Hopkins on their team. So, like, those are guys. It's, again, it's that mid-round value where if I miss out on Lamar and Mahomes and Dak is drafted a little bit earlier and I miss out on him too, then I am waiting for one of my probably two sleepers. Um, my sleepers at QB are Matt Stafford and Daniel Jones. Matt Stafford um, is currently going as quarterback 13, 128th overall or the middle of the 11th round. Wow. <clears throat> you can get Matt Stafford in the middle of the 11th. He averaged 21, almost 21 points per game in eight games in the eight games he played last season, which would have been pace for a top three quarterback finish. And you can get him in the middle of the 11th. That's pretty good. Uh, they have, uh, they do have a harder schedule, but it's because, you know, they lost so many football games last season that everybody that they played this year is going to have a better record than they had last year. Um, Their playoffs are Green Bay at home, so Dome at Tennessee, warm weather, and then Tampa Bay at home. Like, that's a track meet of a championship game. Yeah, everybody Um, loves warm domes. Yep. Absolutely. Offensive line is ranked 11th, three linemen finishing in the top 10 at their respective position. I mean, the guy was incredibly consistent. Five of the eight games he played in, he scored between 20 and 30 points last year. Like... I just I would much rather take Stafford there. And I think you could even make the case for just waiting on quarterback altogether and reaching for a tight end instead, given how deep the quarterback position is. I mean, if Lamar keeps his ridiculous pace of 28 points a game up, then that's one thing. But really, Matt Stafford was only six points a game behind him. And you're talking 12 rounds, 11 rounds different in draft value like i would pay the six points for that and get kelsey or somebody else or another running back or whoever uh and then danny jones he was quarterback five on a per game basis from week eight on last year danny jones yeah and he did all that while playing exactly zero snaps with shepherd saquon Ingram, Tate, and Slayton all on the field together. Like the guy was just so incredible without all of his weapons on the field at the same time. Uh, Their team was third in pass percentage last season, throwing the ball almost two thirds of the time, which is just obscene. Yes, you have Jason Garrett there. I get it. However, the guy isn't exactly a bad offensive 
person, offensive play caller to have. Everybody knows what Dak nope. did last year. They yep. have the seventh easiest schedule. Their playoff schedule at home against Arizona gave up the most points to quarterbacks last season. At home against Cleveland gave up the 12th most points to quarterbacks last season. The one that you probably avoid is at Baltimore gave up the second fewest points to QBs. I mean, and it's at Baltimore. So, I mean, you're probably not going to start Danny Jones there. However, I feel like if you have, you have a few weeks to find somebody for Daniel Jones, who you can get in the beginning of the 13th round. Yeah. Um, So for me, like these are my sleeper guys. I mean, I know, I know, you know, they're being drafted as uh, like quarterbacks, 12 and 13 overall or whatever right now. But, I mean, at the position, I wouldn't – my advice in a COVID year is I'm not really trying to draft two quarterbacks anyway. So for 12-team leagues, I really only think that like 12 quarterbacks should be drafted, period. And so while he's not but, a tra- – But, I mean, probably, generally, how many how many do end up getting drafted? Probably like, closer probably to close. 15. Yeah. But I, would, but I would say – I guess what I would say is like – Traditionally, it's going to be in the last few rounds. And so to me, a sleeper, it's like somebody I would recommend getting drafted. So I'm not going to go out here and call like the 18th or 20th ranked quarterback a sleeper when he's not even going to get drafted anyways. Like, I don't know. And I also feel like a lot of people don't have Danny Jones ranked as high as I do, which is as a top 12 QB. So what uh, what about you? Who are your sleepers? I mean, ultimately, and I alluded to this earlier, but every tight end is a sleeper. Like we don't, we don't know. Like Mark Andrews came on, burst on the scene. It's not that they're sleepers. It's just you. There's so much unpredictability at this. There's so many guys that could have an excellent finish, and but they all have questions. So why take somebody with the super question? early when there's somebody that could finish just as high, but they also have a question later. Like, right. All, all the guys that I've already talked about are are, are going before round 10. So Kelsey Kittle, Andrews, Ertz, Waller, Evan Ingram, Gronk, Higby, Jared Cook, Hunter Henry. Those 10 guys are going before round 10. So how many of those, how many of those guys do you actually want? Like that, you know, will, will be worthy of a top 10 tight end that you know, Jason. No is no, no is probably three and a half because I am a Mark Andrews fan. And and top 10 finish or top five finish? Let's let's say top 10 of those top 10, like Kelsey Kittle, Mark Andrews, Ertz, Waller. Yes. yes. Evan Ingram. No. Gronk. No. Probably. Probably. I I don't know. Maybe t- t- Tyler Higby. Like I want to say, I want to say yes more to Higby than I do to Gronk. Yep. Uh, Jared cook. No Hunter Henry. Absolutely. Maybe not. like, so Rod. Uh, like I just, so if, if you're going to miss on those top three guys or what we consider the top three guys, why would you just not wait until the last round to take them. The players that are available, no offense. Yes. Hayden, Hayden Hurst Helmsley. Yum. TJ Hawkinson, Austin Hooper, Mike Kosicki, Eric Ebron, Chris Herndon, Jack Doyle, Dallas Goddard. So like we, we've had a question come in on YouTube from, from one of our mutual friends, Ryan Bell, where he was like, Hey, what do you think about Jack Doyle? It's a great question because why, why should he not be good? You know, Eric Ebron's no longer there. He's in the, in the Steelers organization. Big Ben will finally be able to throw to him. And I, I do think Eric Ebron could have a productive year after he was like tight end three, two years ago because he had 13 touchdowns. Like that's, that's like a, a legitimate thing. Like he had that season. He had 13 touch, like he had a touchdown like yeah, every it was single only because week. Jack Doyle got hurt though. Like Jack Doyle got I hurt, g- missed half the season. I get it, but 
If if we're talking about Jack Doyle, like as, Makes a, me, as I'm a sl- excited for Jack Doyle. I think he could actually be a pretty decent sleeper. Like if you think about target preference on that team, like for most plays, what T T Y is probably the first read. And then Doyle's probably the second. He's like he, probably the second at least half the time. Like I know that they like Micah a lot, but like I mean, you. I they mean, just had Paris Campbell, I believe, got hurt too. So, yeah, I mean, ESPN calls it out. Um, and and by the way, like, I don't know if ESPN's um, like preseason projections have improved, but every time I read one, I'm like, that's pretty good stuff. Like, once Ebron went on the IR. Jack Doyle led their team with 31 targets and was a 20% target share the last couple weeks, which was after week 12. Like that's legit. And he's not even getting drafted. Like, like, and, and you factor in Phillip rivers, who is clearly always favored a tight end between Antonio Gates and Hunter Henry. Like he's clearly proven that he can support a tight end one and so there's no reason why you can't just wait till the end and take a flyer on Jack Doyle, who's really never put it together since he's been in the league. And that was even with Andrew Accurate. Luck. But man, the hype was there for so many years. It was. It was just sitting there. Um, <laughs> like Austin Hooper has been a top 10 tight end the last several years. I know he's in Cleveland now, but with a new offensive coordinator and I mean, coming over from the Vikings where they were doing Rudolph and Irv Smith Jr., like they do throw the tight end in that offense. And so Austin Hooper didn't just be suddenly become bad and a tight end is always the quarterback's best friend, even though Baker Mayfield may be terrible. Um, but like he's fine and he's going 137th. TJ Hawkinson, we've talked about how Stafford's going to get better and be be good. Mike Kosicki, if if it's Gerald or if it's Patrick, not Fitzgerald, if it's Fitzpatrick's Tua. there and, or two, like I almost feel like he's better with a rookie tight end, but Fitzpatrick was clearly fine with, with Gesicki last year where he was putting you up. You think he's better real, with a rookie quarterback because the rookie QBs lean on the, uh, the tight ends. I mean, again, I can't say with confidence that he's going to be worse than Tyler Higby, Jared Cook or Hunter Henry. So like you might as well just wait and just take a flyer on a couple of guys. That's that's all yeah. I'm saying, because Eric, Eric Ebron for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, I rode the Vance McDonald's train for, you know, for a little while. Right. V- Vance McDonald went like the fifth round in some drafts last year because people were so <laughs> high on him. Like like Heath Miller has proven historically that Big Ben will throw to the tight end. And, and we're not even sure how good Deontay Johnson or Juju Smith Schuster is. So there's no re- like he's he could be the red zone target and I'm not going to say he's going to put up the touchdowns that he put up a couple of years ago but like it wouldn't be surprising to see him put up eight or nine touchdowns in that offense. So right. there's like there's just a crazy like again if you're not going to take one early wait just sit it just just That's sit the it model and wait. for these guys take one early or wait. And for for both sides there you go. Exactly. And so that concludes our studs, sleepers, and or studs, snacko, and sleeper. I guess let's do it in the order that we put them in. Boom. Boom. Um, go ahead. You hey, got something? Hey, no, I was going to say, do you, do you want to do some more newsy stuff to kind of conclude this? I, I do have one newsy item for you that I've, uh, I've put together. Sure, we're coming up on an hour here. What do you got? Newsy stuff. All right, so I've, t- I've previously talked about the three P's of success as being a father, which is uh, puking. Uh, you, you smell like puke, poop, or pee. Uh-huh. My daughter has not pooped in five days. What do you, th- what do you think about that? What is the longest you've ever gone without pooping? Uh, certainly not that long. (laughs) Okay. Just just curious. I don't have a child. Is that like a, should, are you, or should we be worried? It depends on what you read because like they're growing so much 
that like every like nutrient that you put in their body, they they're just, just absorb like absorb it. Yeah, they're just like using it. And so I I don't want to get too graphic on you, but yeah, we're concerned. Um well, I hope- the same time. Yeah, she she's pooped once in the last eight days. Well, I hope everything is okay. I hope no, she's not. I mean, from 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 everything we've read or uh, we've talked to the pediatrician about, it's it's totally normal. But um, huh. yeah, it's just it's just one of those things where it's just like, well, at least she's not hiding it in her crib. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. She is not pooping and stuffing it under the mattress. <laughs> I, I, I can confirm. Uh, uh, that concludes our show let's transition to the social media page oh love it everybody we are at the ff sackos on all social media platforms we're available on all podcast platforms to listen to please follow us everywhere follow us on twitter man the tweets have been fire lately yes yeah, and, uh, and like once you complete a draft send us your team so we can either compliment you or be like what the were you listening to us yeah did you listen to a single pod <laughs> what the hell by the way there my wife go. has her first fantasy draft or well her only league fantasy draft tomorrow um and she's like i'm gonna have to go check out your rankings i'm like you better you better hell yeah well, come on this is this is what we do <laughs> Yeah, I don't, right. I don't think she I don't think she listens, but that's okay. <laughs> Good night everyone. I love your faces. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos. <laughs>